Today, we're going to explore a fascinating and important topic, one that impacts the everyday lives of Muslims around the world, Islamic finance. While many people have heard the term, the principles behind Islamic finance, rooted in the Quran and Hadiths, often remain misunderstood. What makes Islamic finance different? How does it uphold the ethical and moral values of Islam? And most importantly, how can we apply these principles in today's modern financial system? In this video, we'll dive into the core principles of Islamic finance, examine their foundation in Islamic scripture, and provide a guide for how Muslims can integrate these values into their financial lives. So, stay tuned as we explore the world of Islamic economics and discover how it offers an alternative to conventional finance that promotes justice, fairness, and social responsibility. The foundation of Islamic finance is laid out in the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Islamic finance is more than just avoiding interest. It's a comprehensive ethical system that seeks to promote justice and equity in economic dealings. The key principle here is that wealth should be earned in a manner that is lawful, halal, and beneficial to society. At the heart of Islamic finance is the prohibition of riba, interest, or usury. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, Those who consume interest cannot stand on the day of resurrection, except as one stands who is being beaten by Satan into insanity. That is because they say trade is just like interest. But Allah has permitted trade and has forbidden interest. Quran 2, 275. Riba represents an exploitative practice where the lender gains a guaranteed return, regardless of the borrower's circumstances or financial well-being. Islam promotes risk-sharing and fairness, meaning that profits should only be made when the risks are equally shared by both parties. This is a key difference between Islamic finance and conventional finance, where interest can sometimes lead to unjust enrichment at the expense of others. Let's break down the core principles of Islamic finance, starting with the most well-known concepts such as the prohibition of riba and gharar, and moving into how Muslims can navigate today's financial system according to Islamic law, Sharia. 1. Prohibition of riba, interest. As mentioned earlier, the concept of riba is strictly forbidden in Islam. The Quran is very clear about the dangers of interest-based lending. Instead of profiting from someone's misfortune, Islamic finance emphasizes fair trade and investment in real assets. In essence, money should not create more money on its own, Profit must be earned through actual productive activity. Prohibition of gharar, excessive uncertainty. Islamic finance also forbids transactions that involve excessive uncertainty or speculation, known as gharar. This principle is derived from the hadith in which the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Do not sell what is not with you. Sunan Abu Dawood. This hadith points to the idea that all parties must have full knowledge of what they are buying or selling, and there should be no ambiguous or deceptive practices in financial dealings. In practice, this means that contracts in Islamic finance are based on transparency, honesty, and clarity, which protect all parties from unfair exploitation. So there's three. Risk-sharing and profit-sharing, mudaraba and musharaka. In Islamic finance, mudaraba and musharaka are two common forms of partnerships where profit and risk are shared equally between parties. In a mudaraba contract, one party provides the capital, while the other provides expertise and management. Profits are shared based on an agreed ratio, but any losses are borne solely by the capital provider, unless negligence is proven. In musharaka, both parties contribute capital and share in profits and losses equally. These models ensure that all participants in a financial transaction have a stake in the outcome, promoting fairness and equity in economic relationships. Before we wrap up, if you found value in today's video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. By subscribing, you'll join a growing community of viewers who are exploring deep insights into Islamic teachings, history, and daily life. 4. Asset-Backed Financing, Murabaha Unlike conventional loans that charge interest, Islamic finance encourages financing tied to real, tangible assets a cost-plus-profit transaction. In a typical Murabaha contract, the financier buys an asset on behalf of the customer and sells it to them at a marked-up price, with the agreement that the payment will be deferred. 
The financier's profit is not interest, but rather compensation for taking on risk and providing a real good. This principle emphasizes that money should be invested in productive activities that add value to the economy. By promoting real asset-based transactions, Islamic finance discourages purely speculative financial activities that can lead to economic instability. 5. Ethical Investments – Halal versus Haram One of the unique aspects of Islamic finance is the requirement that investments be made in ethical, halal ventures. Any investments or businesses that are involved in prohibited industries, such as alcohol, gambling, pork, or adult entertainment, are strictly forbidden. Islamic finance seeks to ensure that wealth is generated in ways that do not harm society or violate Islamic moral teachings. This ethical dimension encourages Muslims to not only focus on financial returns, but also on the social impact of their investments. In today's world, where ethical and socially responsible investing is growing in popularity, Islamic finance offers a framework that resonates deeply with modern concerns. One of the central tenets of Islamic finance is the concept of zakat, or almsgiving. Zakat is one of the five pillars of Islam and requires Muslims to give a portion of their wealth, typically 2.5%, to help those in need. Zakat serves as a mechanism for wealth redistribution, ensuring that the blessings of wealth reach those who are less fortunate. Islamic finance is deeply connected to social justice, and zakat is a prime example of how financial principles are meant to promote a more equitable society. By requiring Muslims to give from their wealth, Islam seeks to reduce inequality and foster solidarity among communities. So, how can Muslims apply these principles in the modern financial world? One. Avoid interest-based transactions. One of the key actions Muslims can take is to avoid conventional loans that involve interest, such as personal loans, mortgages, or credit card debt. Instead, seek out Sharia-compliant alternatives like Islamic home financing options that use models such as Murabaha or Ajara. 2. Engage in ethical investments. Muslims should seek to invest their money in halal industries and businesses that align with Islamic values. There are now many Islamic investment funds that offer Sharia-compliant investment portfolios. Number three, practice fairness in business. Whether you're an employee or an employer, practicing fairness and transparency in all financial dealings is critical. This not only builds trust, but ensures that your financial practices align with the moral and ethical principles of Islam. In conclusion, the principles of Islamic finance, derived from the Quran and the Hadiths, offer a unique and ethical approach to managing wealth. By focusing on fairness, transparency, and social responsibility, Islamic finance stands in contrast to conventional systems that often prioritize profit over people. For Muslims today, embracing these principles is not only a religious obligation, but also a path toward more just and equitable economic practices. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more insights into Islamic teachings and how they can guide us in every aspect of life. Assalamu alaikum, and until next time, take care and stay blessed.